Miami Hurricanes defensive coordinator hire came completely out of left field. And I'm really starting to believe that the offensive coordinator search is going to play out the same way. You are locked on Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricanes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am Alex Dono, your host. I'm a University of Miami alumnus, longtime South Florida sports radio vet, and contributor to allhurricanes.com. And thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen today. We're available free wherever you get your podcasts and available free on YouTube. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started. We are on this episode going to talk more about the new defensive coordinator, Lance Guidry. The more I know, the more I love. Uh, but we're going to circle back to that because I do want to talk about this offensive coordinator search. This needs to be wrapped up relatively quickly, hopefully with the right person. But, you know, three weeks away from spring football, we've got to find some resolution here. Um, now, here's why I think the next offensive coordinator – could end up being someone we're not talking about right now, okay? Uh, it's going to play out similarly to Lance Guidry, who was not on any of our radars until right when it happened, why the offensive coordinator search could play out the same way. And it's because the names that we have been talking about, I'm not feeling confident that either of or any of the names that we've been talking about over the last week or two are going to end up taking the job. Let's start with Jason Candle. I have many reasons to fully believe that Mario Cristobal loves Jason Candle, the head coach at Toledo. Um, and I have been led to believe that the job could be his if he wants it. The problem is, I don't know that Jason Candle wants it. It's a very loaded decision for him. Candle, I'm sure his aspirations are higher than head coach at Toledo. Like He's been a, head, a successful head coach at a group of five program. I would think he wants to at some point be the head coach of a power five team. I don't know if he has NFL aspirations or not, but I'm sure that he wants to be a head coach at a bigger program than Toledo. So he's got to decide for him is the best career path sticking it out a little longer at Toledo where he's had success parlay that into a power five head coaching job or going to a power five program and being hopefully a successful offensive coordinator. Is that what's going to get him to the next level? Right. I, I don't think that he's looking for, you know, if he does end up an offensive coordinator at Miami or somewhere else, I don't think that's the end game for him. I think it's a stepping stone, but he's got to decide if that's the best stepping stone for where he wants to go. So not only does Jason candle have to decide if, the best career path for him is leaving his group of five head coaching job for a power five coordinator job. He's also got to decide if Miami's power five coordinator job is actually the one that he wants reported this morning, Wednesday morning by David Lake from inside the U who does an awesome job. Uh, the belief he gets from talking to people close to Toledo is that if candle were to leave and there is some buzz for him leaving, but if he were to leave the Rockets, he would be more likely to take the Notre Dame coordinator job than the one at Miami. Remember, the Notre Dame job has been open for, what, several days now since Tommy Reese from Notre Dame went to Alabama. Alabama took Notre Dame's offensive coordinator. They took Miami's defensive coordinator. Uh, so, Candle, I mean, Notre Dame, obviously a lot geographically closer to Toledo, Midwest, and he and Notre Dame coach Marcus Freeman are close. So the belief in Toledo for what that's worth is because we obviously we know Mario Cristobal and the loafers, they work in silence. So maybe Miami's business is just kept a little bit quieter. But the belief up in Toledo is that, yeah, Candle could leave. But if he leaves, more likely to be Notre Dame than Miami. That's interesting. And then the other part of it from Miami's point of view is um, I do believe Jason Candle uh, very well could be Mario Cristobal's top choice. And he might be waiting for an answer, a yes or a no from Candle. Do you want the job or not? And if Jason Candle is dragging his feet here, at some point, Mario Cristobal is going to have to put a deadline on this. At some point, he's got to stop waiting for his answer. Because Candle did something similar to Miami last year. Miami pursued Jason Candle for this job last year. 
He waited to decide, and then he ultimately decided to stay at Toledo and not come here. So again, spring football about three weeks away. Miami needs an offense. Miami needs some kind of a system. Right now, you have no OC, no quarterbacks coach, and no wide receivers coach, because I don't believe you're going to fill all of those jobs until you know who the coordinator is going to be. That's how the dominoes are going to fall into place. So the clock is ticking on that, okay? So uh, I'm having the longer this goes with Jason Candle, the more I have my doubts that he's going to be the guy. Could he decide to stay at Toledo? Maybe. Could he decide to go to Notre Dame? Maybe. Could he decide to come to Miami? Maybe. Uh, but there, there's a lot, a lot of things to consider there. So the other most prominent name that seems to be in the mix here, because uh, Pro Football Scoop uh, w- w- reported this, and they've they've been pretty reliable on this stuff. Doug Nussmeyer. Um, I believe Mario respects Nussmeyer's resume. I believe that. Mario's and Nussmeyer's offensive philosophies align pretty well. Uh, and yet, yeah, to me, Nussmeyer does command respect with all of his experience, including NFL experience, right? He's been an offensive coordinator at some big programs at college, has held some prominent jobs uh, with the Dallas Cowboys. And I know that Hurricanes fans, I, I get it. Uh, you don't like the offense he runs and you hate the numbers that his offense has put up while at Florida. They weren't pretty. Um, I will remind you, Mario Cristobal does not care what any of us think. He's going to end up hiring the person he feels most comfortable with, whether we like it or not. Maybe it's Nussmeier, maybe it isn't. But from Nussmeier's side of it, even if Mario Cristobal does want him, I'm not sure that Nuss is ultimately going to want the job here, even if he's offered. He seems to be in the mix for assistant coaching roles in the NFL after having success with the Cowboys for the past five years, does Nussmeyer want to leave the NFL to come back to the college ranks if he doesn't have to? So those are the names that we've been hearing. Nussmeyer, Candle, I'm not sure either of them are coming here. Uh, and, you know, if anyone's out there like, what about Scott Frost? What about the Frost? Um, you know, maybe you watched our and listened to our episodes last week. Maybe you didn't. I was also about a week ago told by a source that I trust not to expect Frost to be the OC. I don't believe he's in the mix here. So I've long believed you can cross his name off the list. Uh, Mario Cristobal might end up finding the offensive version of Lance Guidry to become the next OC, right? Someone we're not talking about right now, but hopefully someone who's an up-and-comer, someone who can build strong relationships with his players and fellow staff members like the previous guy couldn't do, and hopefully someone who's going to stick around for at least three years. Because you would like to have some semblance of continuity. Because remember, there are downsides to going after bigger names, right? For anyone who's brought up people like Cliff Kingsbury, Scott Frost, Dan Mullen, there's a downside to going after big names because big names are often going to use your job as a stepping stone and they're going to hope to bolt after a year or two. Uh, But let's talk more about the new defensive coordinator. The more that I learn about Lance Guidry, the new D.C., the more I really like the hire, okay? Remember, Lance Guidry's defense at Marshall last year absolutely stymied Notre Dame in South Bend. Did you see also the video that's going around of that speech that Guidry a few years ago when he was at Western Kentucky, the speech that he gave to his players about hilltoppers and he's like going crazy. It's gone viral. Uh, Steve Smith Sr. even retweeted it. I would run through a freaking wall for this guy. After I watched that video of Guidry, I wanted to put on a helmet and pads after watching that. Uh, So uh, the year before Guidry arrived at Marshall, and Marshall is where he was for the last two years, and it was remarkable the way he turned around that defense. The year before he arrived at Marshall, Marshall's defense was 95th in America. He improved that to 44th in his first year, and in his second year, they ranked 8th in the country in total defense. So in two years, from 95th to 8th, that's a remarkable improvement. He improved their rushing defense from number 105 in the country to number five in the country. That's 100 spots of improvement. Remarkable. Marshall's defense uh, ranked 16th in sacks last year. They sacked opposing quarterbacks 38 times last season. Uh, yeah, I mentioned that Notre Dame victory, which is obviously a signature moment on Guidry's resume, how good that defense was against the Fighting Irish. They intercepted Notre Dame three times in that game. They held the crying Irish to just four for 13 on third down. They held Notre Dame to 21 points at their stadium at South Bend. And Guidry, remember, he's going to have a lot more talent to coach at Miami than he did at Marshall. 
Uh, something I think that Gidry can do better, hopefully he can do this better than Kevin Steele did, is not over-rotate his personnel. Because Steele coached Miami as if Miami had Alabama's depth, rotating everybody in and out. Sometimes it's okay to keep your best players out on the field for a few extra snaps. Hopefully Gidry does that. Some areas that I believe Lance Gidry can really improve at Miami, like dramatically improve. Third down defense is an area where Miami needs an exorcism, okay? Do you know where Miami's defense ranked last season in third downs? 98th in America. Disgusting. Do you know where Marshall under Gidry ranked last season in third down defense? First in America. Whew. Miami needs to fix their red zone defense. The Hurricanes ranked 61st last year in red zone stops. Marshall ranked 19th. So I'm still the one thing I'm still trying to learn more about on Lance Gidry is his history as a recruiter and how effective he could be as a recruiter at Miami. Now, obviously, uh, in places like Marshall and Western Kentucky, you're not recruiting the same type of players. So, you know, there's obviously there's a, there's a question mark. OK, a question mark on Lance Gidry is how he's going to perform at every aspect of his job at the power five level, because he's not done it. He's worked at the group of five level. So that's going to include recruiting. Uh, I think based on his personality, he's probably good at it. The guy is bubbling with energy. Also, I like the fact that Lance Gidry is from Louisiana. So hopefully he can get Miami in more homes in that state, because Louisiana is absolutely loaded with high school talent these days. We all know South Florida loaded. Southern California, throughout the state of California, loaded. Texas, loaded. Louisiana is right there up with the big boys. Like, per capita, some of the best talent in the country. So that's why I like the hire. Um, I want to get, when we come back, I'm excited to get a fresh perspective on everything going on at Miami. We're going to be joined by Alex Thomas, who runs the very popular Canes Fam News Twitter account, they're actually more popular than our Twitter account at Locked On Canes. So if, if you follow at Canes Fam News, there's like 20,000 people following that account. Throw us a follow at Locked On Canes and we will follow you back. Uh, but Alex Thomas, who runs Canes Fam News, is going to join us next. I want to ask him uh, and I want to ask you guys as well, if you want to leave us a comment on Twitter at Locked On Canes, if you're, if you're starting to feel frustration and negativity bubbling over, right, with Antoine Jackson wanting to leave the program, with Miami still not having an offensive coordinator, are, are you starting to lose a little bit of your faith in Mario? We're going to talk about that next here on Locked on Canes, right after we talk about FanDuel. This year, the only app you need at your Super Bowl party is FanDuel. It's America's number one sports book. We're really excited about our new sports betting partner for Locked On because they're the number one sports book in America, FanDuel. And if you're new to FanDuel, that's even better. They have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. Download FanDuel now so you can bet Super Bowl 57 with a no-sweat first bet. You'll get up to $3,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. FanDuel lets you bet on everything from the money line to point spreads to who will score a touchdown. And by the way, folks, one of my favorite numbers heading into this game is, I'm looking at this right now, FanDuel Sportsbook, Travis Kelsey, anytime touchdown scorer at minus 115. That feels like free money to me, that Travis Kelsey is going to score a touchdown at any point in the game. Travis Kelsey, minus 115, anytime touchdown scorer. I absolutely love that one. Um, FanDuel Sportsbook app is safe, secure, and it's super easy to use. Best of all, you can get paid your winnings instantly. So join FanDuel today at FanDuel.com slash locked on to claim your no sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the NFL. So wanted to get a fresh perspective here on just the way everything's playing out. It's been a turbulent offseason, and I encourage people not to pay so much attention to what the Florida fans and the Florida State fans are saying about what's going on at Miami. I mean, maybe Florida fans should be looking in the mirror and stop bouncing those $13 million checks. But it, the trash talking is coming from all directions, and I wanted to bring on, uh, very happy to connect with here, Alex Thomas is his name. You probably know him on Twitter as Kane's Fam News, a really popular Twitter account helping people stay updated on everything going on with the Canes. Alex, thanks for joining us. How you doing, sir? Thanks, Alex. Great to be on. Thanks for having me. It's just like the Alex Alex connection here, yeah. and, and, well, and hopefully we'll do this again. <laughs> yeah, totally, totally. So, okay, 
Um, I haven't zoomed out on these situations in a while because I, I get so bunkered in on all the little things that are happening. Who are they looking at for OC? You know, they've hired a DC who I really like. Antoine Jackson wants to leave. And then I noticed the pulse of social media. A lot of Hurricanes fans are they're they're getting a little disillusioned. Like they're they're starting to maybe lose a little faith in Mario. They're wondering why the OC thing is taking so long. They're wondering why players who just signed a national letter of intent are looking to leave. Uh, are you starting to feel a, a little bit of that negativity? And are, are you starting to lose a little faith in Mario? I think we got to calm down. It's this it's the standard UM fan base. We got to just take a deep breath, understand where we are. It's Mario's first year and inherited a mess. We had, you know, Mark Rick and Manny for a couple of years and it's just been a, a lot of, you know, disconnected kind of coaching staffs and guys in, guys out. Mario's our guy. We got to stick with him for the long haul. And on the recruiting side, you know, Antoine, it's fine. I'd rather have him do it now than be someone in the locker room who's going to be talking to guys and not be bought in with what Mario's doing. Um, you know, look, it's the offseason. You know, look at Alabama. They had to get two new coordinators. And you look at what Clemson's done with um, Dabo. And, you know, they've had him for the long haul. And he had some tough years, but they stuck it out with him. And I think the same thing goes for Mario. He's passionate about the job. He's a proven recruiter. It's one of our best class we've had in many years. And let it play out. Let's stick with him and get his back. So. With, with with Antoine, you know, I had said uh, on the show yesterday, and this is my opinion. I, I stand by it. I, I think if a, if a player decides they don't want to don't want to stay, I, I don't necessarily think you have to play hardball with them. You know, no. grant him his release. You take it as a learning experience. I, I know that there there has been a little bit of little bit of buzz that may, maybe they might hold him to the fire a little bit. Not saying they wouldn't let him leave, but that they would, right. you know, make him honor his letter of intent to the point where he would have to use his one-time transfer, that he may have to sit out a year, yeah. use his one-time transfer. And, and listen, well, whatever it is, man, I mean, just that's letting right. him out of it, that's my opinion. Uh, either way, like you said, Alex, I don't want to keep this guy around if he doesn't want to be here. No, it's we look, I think what we've seen in the last several years, you know, look at all the guys that transferred out, you know, Tay Williams and – I mean, there's so many guys. It's like we don't want guys in the locker room that aren't bought in. And we've seen that, you know, even from the golden era with Mark Rick to Manny, you get guys that, you know, they put their head down and mope around. That's not what we want at UM. That's not what you see with the top programs at Bama and Georgia. Those guys are, you know, hard hitting in your face. No shit. And, um, you know, it's it's tough. So. What is uh what's your opinion on Lance Gidry, the new defensive coordinator? Because mine mine evolved a little bit when I first saw the name, like when the news was breaking. I'm like, I know I've heard that name before. I don't no. know much about this guy. No. And then I, I think not only in my case, but the the more that I learn about Gidry, and you see that video of him ranting about hilltoppers, which I thought was pretty oh, fire me up, coach. I love it. <laughs> fire me up. I mean, I don't know if you saw Steve Smith even tweeted. Yeah, um, you know the great Carolina wide receiver, Hall of Famer. I mean, he he was like, I don't know who this guy is. I don't know what a hilltopper is, but I want to get in the locker room and play for him. And I think that's what we need. I mean, everyone's always said, you know, in the old, you know, the last couple of regimes, it's like no one really got in anyone's face. And this guy is like, you know, he, what he did in Notre Dame last year, he gave Tommy Reese fits, who's yeah. now the new OC at Alabama. You know, look at the numbers he posted at Marshall, and I think with the talent we have at Miami, that's improving class after class. If he can be here, you know, end of his career, he's posted great numbers. If he could be here for the long haul, I love it. I mean, let's let's get a guy in. You know, we've always chased the name, I feel like, here and always wanted the, that guy and this guy. And I think, look, having Charlie Strong, if he will stay, it'd be great. But to have Gidry, you know, with us is, is, a, is a big win, so. Yeah, do, do you think uh, do you think Charlie Strong may take his coaching talent somewhere else? Because I don't know, I, I find it hard to think he wants to stick around if he was passed over for this. I, I don't, I don't disagree. I mean, it, I don't know what his life, the lifestyle in Miami is a good place to be. So, you know, his family and things like that, you know, going to Alabama, j jumping around, is he going to end up taking the Alabama DC job? If something happens um, with Steele? you know, who knows he's in line wherever he goes. So I think, you know, being in Miami and, and probably likes working with Mario, you see them on the recruiting trail a lot. Um, I hope he stays. I think he's good for the program and he's obviously been at you know, Texas and Louisville. So it's good having him around. You know, I got to tell you, Alex, based on the way that the D.C. hire came about, would not surprise me if the offensive coordinator ends up being someone no yeah. one's talking about right now. It wouldn't surprise me if it plays out that way. What What do you look for and what do you hope Mario Cristobal yeah. can find in the next offensive coordinator? Look, I, I think with Miami offenses, I mean, even with, with Mark Rick, I mean, you saw kind of the cozy clap and the slow developing plays and running between the tackles. That's not Miami. I mean, we have yeah. speed with Bashard Smith, 
Restrepo. I mean, we have guys that have a lot of speed, and we have to take advantage of that. Up tempo. I mean, look what we did with Rhett. When Rhett was the OC, we had tempo. We had put up points. TVD liked it. We were he was in the shotgun, and I think we kind of reverted back to an old way with Gaddis, which obviously showed. I mean, we weren't putting up numbers. We were, you know, if we could got to twenty points a game, it was a big win. And you know, <laughs> from my perspective, it's like Miami needs to take advantage of the speed and get guys on the outside and move the ball. So. You know, it's hard for us to throw out a name because, you know, we're not in Mario's office. We don't know what he's talking about. Everybody likes Candle. Um, I think it's going to be competitive with him in Notre Dame. He's yeah. obviously only a few miles from, from South Bend. But whoever Mario picks, I think, you know, he knows what we need. He saw it didn't work with Gas and Gas's style of offense. And whoever he ends up picking for the OC job is going to be the best fit for the program. And the best thing about what we have now is we have TBD. And, you know, he's a he's been there for a long time. He's, you know, talked about it potential Heisman candidate several years ago and, you know, had battled the injury bug last year, but he's our guy. And, you know, coming in as an OC, having someone who's a proven number one starter, I love it. Um, I think it's going to be a tough stretch with the schedule. We got, you know, Clemson at home, you got tough road games coming up. Uh, you know, it'll be tough from that perspective, but I, I love with where we're at. And, and I think trust Mario with who he picks. So it sounds like you believe in Van Dyke. I do. Uh, I, I think, better protection is going to be a huge factor there. A Definitely. lot of people don't. A lot of people think that uh, that Van Dyke might even hold Miami back. I don't I don't agree with that. We, he's got a big arm. Look, he's not as mobile, but I think, yeah. you know, if we get the right O-line, we, our O-line has been atrocious for several years. I mean, I think with just performance and the player development, now we got a couple of great guys, some good transfers, a guy from Alabama, Cohen, um, and even just the freshman we got, Pancake, and, you know, I think, I think we got a lot of good guys coming in that are going to step up and Develop in the offseason. Some guys that even came in early in January, um, but I think give the, give Demarcus or give TVD some you know some ability to get some time in the pocket. I think he's going to develop and and have a good season. But it's got to be tempo. It's got to be quick. And I like him in the pocket. So now, if I don't ask you this question, I know our comments are going to be flooded with the questions. Where did you get that hat? Because I love that vintage and and show people. There's even like what, what I don't even know what you call that. There's like the cord <laughs> over. So, yeah, so we got the we got the U on the side, and it's a forty seven brands hat, and you know we got the the rope cord up front. The rope so cord. Yeah, so forty seven brands is the is the company, and a little bit of like a retro hat. It's my uh, game yeah. day hat, so I'm wearing it for a few years now, and you know, I thought I'd bring it on the show. Well, it looks like it's in really good condition because for me, any hat that I've had three years probably looks yeah. awful. I know throwing it into the couch after bad games or yeah. empty chair. It's tough being five and seven last year. It's seen a little wear and tear, but hopefully next year's a little better. Well, let people know again uh, what you're doing with the Twitter account, Kane's Fam News. Uh, we were talking a little bit off air about how, like, you know, you, you, when when you started that account, you didn't really think anything of it, and you no. guys are like, you, you're close to twenty thousand followers now. Yeah, it's it's amazing. I mean, started in 2012 as you know, kind of grew up a diehard Kane fan, third generation. Um, UM grad, grew up in South Florida, live in Palm Beach County and, you know, go to all the home games, had season tickets forever. And, you know, with all the kind of reading and due diligence I was doing on the UM, I, I thought, let's just start a hand handle and threw it up there and started getting momentum. And some some guys hate us. A lot of people love us. But that comes with it. As you know, Alex, you get a lot of comments, too. But it's super fun, interactive. And, you know, I look forward to seeing where it takes us. You know, every year it's it's more and more enjoyable. So well, I meet a lot of great people on here. Well, I, I appreciate it, Alex. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Th thanks for weighing in, and, and thanks for help, help. Thanks for helping me keep some perspective because I, I see the way Definitely. that like people are freaking out no. about everything going on. Let's you take know, a deep just... breath. Let's take a deep breath, Canes fans. It's all gonna it's all gonna work out. Look forward to the upcoming years with Mario. Let's stick with him. He's our guy. So hang in there. There you have it, Alex Thomas at Canes Fam News on Twitter. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much to Alex Thomas from Canes Fam News for joining us. Uh, we're going to talk about the latest on Antoine Jackson wanting to leave the program after not really even arriving at Miami yet. So keep it locked right here to Locked on Canes. And thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen today. We're available free wherever you get your podcasts. Available free on YouTube. And guys, make sure you leave us a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel at Locked On Canes. And make sure you make Locked On College Basketball your second listen. As our Canes continue to dominate, make sure you check out the newest show on the channel. Andy Patton and Isaac Shade do an awesome job taking you around college basketball. All the biggest stories, all the biggest guests. Locked On College Basketball, available wherever you get your podcasts. 
So um, I know that a lot of you disagreed with my take yesterday on Antoine Jackson. I did an emergency episode on Jackson requesting a release from his national letter of intent. This is an incoming true freshman cornerback, four star out of Dillard. A lot of you disagreed with my take yesterday that what I said was um, you should probably just grant him the release and move on, right? Because I don't see much point in playing hardball with a 17-year-old who apparently regrets the decision that he made uh, because I don't want this guy to be in a locker room if he doesn't want to be there, have to be coached by people if he doesn't want to be there. I don't think it's fair to anyone. That's just my opinion, of course, okay? Uh, Because a lot of you were telling me in our comments that you think Antoine Jackson, he should be held to the fire here and they shouldn't just grant him the release. He signed a binding agreement. They shouldn't grant him his release. And those of you who feel that way, you might get your wish. You might. okay? because Gabby Arudia from 24-7 Sports uh, reported that he hears some buzz that Miami might, and I don't think any decision has been made, but they might not just release him from the agreement and they would actually force him to use his one-time transfer, that he would uh, he would have to basically use up his portal transfer instead of just getting let out of the letter. Because after all, he did sign the letter of intent, and Gabby brings up a compelling point here that you know Miami, they let him sign that letter on December 21st, despite there were some red flags in his recruitment. He was waffling a lot. He was waffling on his decision shortly before signing day. As we talked about in yesterday's episode, he did take an official visit to ECU shortly before signing day. There had also been some talk about him potentially flipping to Colorado. Uh, So, you know, Miami staff, they put in time, they put in resources, and they put money into his recruitment. So, you know, they might force him to deal with the consequences from that, that it's not like they they can't force him to stay at Miami, but instead of just releasing him from the letter of intent, uh, they could hold him to it. So, you know, he would have to, I guess, like sit out a year and then use up his one time transfer. So that might be the way that it plays out. I mean, listen, it's uh, I, I guess they could be worried about setting a precedent, right? If you know, but again, if it were me, I usually say, you know what, you're talking about a 17 year old kid. Um, you know, he he regrets his decision, changes his mind. I, I say live and let live, but I, I know a lot of you disagreed with me on that. Um, so there's where we're at. He may not just be granted that letter of release, but a couple of other notes on the Antoine Jackson situation. You know, he his high school teammate is Chris Johnson, who we love, the four star running back out of Dillard. Now, Chris Johnson. He did come out and tweet and say, I'm paraphrasing here, but he said he's 100% Kane. Don't worry about Chris. Like just because his high school teammate, you know, is is looking to get out that Chris Johnson apparently is not looking to get out. He's happy to be a Kane. He and Antoine are two very different people with two very different opinions. So do not worry about Chris Johnson, even though he and Antoine Jackson are apparently very close. Do not worry about that one. And so Antoine Jackson, when we found out that he was requesting his release from Miami, uh, it was first reported by Frank Tucker at Miami Rivals. And then Antoine Jackson actually, he quote tweeted it and confirmed it. Like he reaffirmed this report that I'm requesting my release is true. He later deleted that tweet. Like he deleted Antoine did any mention of it. So it it led some people to wonder, has he already changed his mind? Is he going to stay at Miami? I don't believe that's the case. Uh, I believe uh, from from what I can gather, he still does want to leave Miami. I think he probably deleted the tweets because he was getting a lot of heat from fans on social media. He probably just wanted, you know what, I, I don't need to deal with this right now. So he deleted the tweets. Uh, and, you know, we we speculated yesterday that him wanting to leave might have something to do with the defensive coordinator change that maybe Kevin Steele leaving had something to do with that. Uh, it's my understanding that it, it has nothing to do with that. So that that wasn't the the primary driving factor here. So that is where we are at. Thank you guys so much for making us your first listen today. Make sure to hit the thumbs up button if you're watching us on YouTube and subscribe. If you're listening to us, subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Odyssey, wherever you get your podcasts, and leave us a five-star review if you have a few minutes to do that. And we will talk to you again next time on another episode of Locked on Canes, part of the awesome Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day.